Uh, In the last few episodes, we've been talking about the future of work. Companies around the globe have been transitioning, quote unquote, back to work, and people have been coming back into physical environments, and then others have been staying remote. And every company, every team, every organization is renegotiating what that experience is going to be. What are the powerful in-person experiences that they still need to create? And so we've been identifying trends and leadership tips and keys for leading during this quote unquote, big shift that you've heard people talking about or the great resignation. Today's episode, we're going to be talking and defining what emotional intelligence is, what is it, and why is it important. And this will be part one of a two-part series about emotional intelligence. Welcome back to The Thermostat with Jason Barger. If you're currently on a commute, a walk, or just a micro break in your day, glad you're making time to step back to think, and to reflect on the next steps on your journey. I've never been more convinced. The best leaders and team cultures in the world are the ones that make time to step back and calibrate their thermostat. I hope today's conversation leaves you feeling grounded and inspired. Now let's dive into today's topic to engage our minds and hearts in order to authentically lead and create compelling cultures wherever we are in the world. Hey everyone, it's Jason, and welcome back to the Thermostat Podcast. Uh, Welcome, thank you for being here, so glad you're here, Uh, whatever this is for, uh, you know, however you are today, this week, this month, however you are uh, listening to this podcast, welcome back, so glad you are here. If you've been one of the OGs that have been here from the very beginning, uh, thank you so much, so glad that you are back and listening and that this has become a sacred part of your week of of listening and taking 20, 30, 40 ish minutes or so, and just stepping back to allow yourself to think, whether that's in your office, you know, your morning a routine or on a commute or whatever that may be for you. Uh, so glad that you are back. If you are new to the podcast, welcome. So glad you're here. Uh, this is exciting that this continues to grow and spread. We're uh, up over to, you know, close to 90 episodes now. And so I invite you to go back, listen to seasons one, two, three, four, uh, anything before this, because amazing, amazing thought leaders that have joined me and great micro pods that I think will add value to wherever you are on your own leadership or or just journey in your life, your own thinking about the culture that you're trying to create, who you're hoping to be in the world. Uh, I am, uh, I, I want this to be, I say this every time, but I want this to be a space for you to be able to step back, to get away from a noisy world, uh, whatever that is for you, uh, to be able to have some time to think. And to then reflect on the person that you want to be, the response that you want to make. And I want this to be a positive place that gives you some things to think about and adds value uh, to your life. I am uh, more convinced of this than ever, that authentic leadership and compelling cultures are needed in the world more than ever. So I'm seeing this with teams and organizations and, and leaders that have been trying to navigate their way through all the changes in the world. And people are thirsty for leadership they're thirsty for uh, cultures that bring out the best in them. And so uh, we need to help create those uh, for people. Uh, before we dive into today, uh, I, if you'll do me a quick favor, I would really appreciate that. If you will uh, take a second to rate this podcast five stars, of course. Uh, if you'll leave a nice review, a positive view, review, all of these way, things are, are ways in which people can help find the podcast. It helps the algorithms. It helps it amplify this, these messages so more and more people around the world can find it. Uh, I appreciate that very much. And then also if you'll just share it, if you'll, you'll share and say, hey, if there's an episode that you really liked or uh, if, there's, if, if you just say, hey, I love this podcast or something and share it with a colleague, a team member, somebody in your life that you say, hey, you know, I think this is something that, that might be good for you. Uh, I appreciate that. That's whether we like it or not. I hate asking for that kind of thing, but that's the way that things uh, spread in the world. So uh, thank you for all your efforts to help amplify these messages. Uh, in the last few episodes, we've been talking about the future of work, this this phrase and this thing that people have been writing articles about and talking about a lot uh, l- uh, lately. And so in the first few episodes, we've, we've talked about, you know, as companies around the globe have been transitioning, quote unquote, back to work and people have been coming back into physical environments and then others have been staying remote and every company, every team, every organization is renegotiating what that experience is going to be, what are the powerful in-person experiences that they still need to create, 
you know, when are those going to be those times to have that power of congregation, the energy in a room so that people can feel and look in each other's eyes and have those in informal conversations and be in the same space together that, that that is always going to be really important and, and places are trying to figure out when they do that and how they do that. And then others are also obviously uh, still leveraging remote work and realizing that they can be effective and productive and that, that for work life balance, that can be really helpful for some people. And so, they still need to figure out ways to engage the minds and hearts of their people remotely. And so we're in the midst of this future of work. And we've been talking about in the last couple episodes about, you know, how do we, you know, uh, navigate our way through everything that we're happening, that's happening around us without losing performance, without losing the results, the impact that we're trying to have with the mission and the, the purpose of our organization or our team. And so we've been identifying trends and leadership tips and keys for leading during this quote unquote big shift that you've heard people talking about or the great resignation or this idea of the future of work. And in the last episode, I, I talked about I just a reminder to us all that culture is not your building. Culture is not your building. Again, it's a, it's a uh, great buildings, great designs, great aesthetics help enhance culture and create an environment where culture can then be more authentic and, and really bring it to life. Or poor design, poor buildings, poor uh, aesthetics can, can really detract from the culture and make it just make our work as leaders and, and with people just, you know, we can also be fighting the space almost. So space is really important. But our buildings are not our culture. And so in the last episode, we all talked, you know, talked about the ecosystem of our thinking, acting and interacting that creates the culture that it's that it's the insider walls and certainly remotely the thinking, acting and interacting that creates that culture. And today on today's podcast, we're going to be talking about uh, we're going to be talking about emotional intelligence. And really over the next two episodes, we're going to be diving into this topic around emotional intelligence because we know that in the environment, it's always been important, but in the environment that we're in right now, leading and creating cultures that are have high EQ, high emotional intelligence, are, are thriving and are gr- growing and navigating their way better than those that don't. And so we're going to be t- on today's episode. We're going to be talking and defining. We're going to talking about and defining what emotional intelligence is. What is it? And why is it important? And this will be part one of a two-part series about emotional intelligence. So recent. Studies have revealed that 58% of performance, 58% of all performance is directly tied to emotional intelligence. Let me, let me say that again. 58% of everything we do, a study show that is tied to our emotional intelligence. So all of us have a particular IQ our own intelligence, you know, where our, uh, you know, experts and scientists will tell us that may, our, our IQ, our intelligence, uh, the knowledge that we're, we've stored, kind of our cognitive abilities to retain information and, and then put it into practice, you know, a particular skill of some sort, that our intelligence is fairly set, that, that all of us have an IQ and our intelligence is fairly set. We also have a personality type. So again, you've probably taken a lot of the different assessments out there. There are many great ones out there, many of which I use with different teams and organizations that I support. But for us to better understand, all of us have a uniquely and natural orientation to our own personality, how we show up to the table and in our line of thinking that typically doesn't change a whole lot. Our personality is a part of just kind of the uniqueness of who we are. And so our IQ and our personality don't change a whole lot. But our EQ, our emotional intelligence, is something that studies show that we do have a capacity to build, to grow, and to develop. And our emotional intelligence is our own awareness, our ability. We're going to define it today, but we're going to talk about our own awareness individually and then certainly with the people around us, our ability to listen and to then read the room and read our own emotions and feelings and then the response the action that, and the behavior that we put into place based on our own emotional intelligence. And studies say that 58% of all of our performance, of all the tasks, of all the things we do every day, 58% of that success or lack of success is directly tied to emotional intelligence. 
And so we know this, that employee engagement, so engaging the mind and heart of our employees and the people within our teams and our, our cultural ecosystem, the experience that we create, that employee experience that we create, and those, uh, and those teams and organizations that are creating what's, what's been deemed as meaningful work cultures, which, again, you can listen to past podcast episodes about that to, to hear more about that. We know that in those kinds of employee engagement, employee experience, meaningful cultures that are all creating this so that we can serve the clients and customers and world uh, that we're here to do, those that are, are are really focused on employee engagement and experience and culture are two to five times more likely to hit their targets, to delight customers, to engage the minds and hearts of their people, to retain employees, to to attract and and, and have more people that want to work for you, and ultimately also to win awards and be be represented and appreciated for things like being a best place to work. That there's metrics that show all of this. We also know that people right now in the world, uh, studies show that nine out of every ten people say they would t- actually take a pay cut in order to work for a more meaningful culture. So engaging of the mind and heart of our people is a huge component to performance. We also know the context, again, that we've been talking about in the last couple episodes about the world that we've been in lately of the Great Resignation, where 7.6 million people in the months of April and May in 2021 just up and quit their jobs, and that the U.S. Department of Labor says that 41% of workers are considering leaving their employer this year. So we know that the impact of the strain and the stress and the challenges of the last two years related to the pandemic, social justice, political and economic uncertainty, uh, kids being schooled online or at home, all of this work-life balance stuff that people have been burned out. Many people have been stepping back to reevaluate, hey, what do I want for my life? What do I want for my career? And many of them then are looking for, hey, I want to be a part of more, a more meaningful culture, a more meaningful work culture where I feel like I contribute, my voice matters, my talents are used, and I'm a part of co-creating and building something, and I want to have a better employee experience. And so the war for talent is on, and there's all this talk about the big shift of people then are quitting their jobs or jumping to other places and really culture is becoming that competitive advantage because people are, are are leaving and wanting to go to places that are thoughtful and intentional about, hey, this is a culture we're creating together and we really need you to be a part of it and help us. And so leadership and culture matters. And so on today, we're going to be beginning to define emotional intelligence. What is it and why is it important? And we'll start back in just a second. Let's take a quick break, and then we'll be back to talk more about emotional intelligence. Many teams and organizations right now are realizing they need to do both. They need to engage the minds and hearts of their people in person, bring people back together in person, and continue to engage the minds and hearts of their people virtually. So whether you're planning that next event, that that power in congregation, the power and the energy that comes from bringing all your people into the same room, into the same space for that important meeting or conference, and you need a powerful keynote speech or facilitated team discussion or facilitated conversation that is the currency for change about leadership, about the culture that you're trying to create together, or the mindset that is needed to navigate all that is in front of you, whether you're planning that in person or you need to do that virtually. I hope that we can be a resource to you and support you in that effort. If so, contact us at jasonvbarger.com, at jasonvbarger.com. If we can partner with you to help engage the minds and hearts of your people in these important times. Okay, so let's define EQ or emotional intelligence so that we're talking the same language. As you've heard me say in the past, oftentimes we throw around these terms like leadership or culture or, in this case, emotional intelligence, and we think that everybody just gets it. Everybody knows, but the reality is, and I've done this with groups around the world, companies around the world, where I've talked about even, tell me what the the term leadership means, and, and you may get 50 different definitions. And so the exercise with our teams and organizations to get clear on when we say leadership, 
What is the type of leadership that we're really talking about? What does compelling leadership look like? When we say this term culture, what is it that we're really talking about? And do we even understand the process of how it's created? And can we even articulate what is that future culture that we want to create? So we can't just say the buzzword. we got to understand how are we defining it and what is it that we actually want. And the same thing is true for an EQ or what we refer to as emotional intelligence. So let's define it. Emotional intelligence is your ability to recognize and understand, recognize and understand the emotions in yourself and others, and then your ability to use this awareness to manage your behavior and your relationships. I'm going to say that again. Again, think about recalibrating the thermostat. It starts with us individually. And then there's about an extension. So there's an internal side of this that then the internal temperature that we set then begins to set a external temperature with the people around us. So again, emotional intelligence is your ability to recognize, to recognize and understand the emotions in yourself first, to recognize and understand your own emotions. What am I feeling in this moment? And making sense of that and, and kind of taking the temperature and then figuring out, you know, what is my current temperature right now? How am I feeling about whatever it is I'm experiencing? So recognizing and understanding your own internal feelings and then also recognizing and understanding and having an awareness of how other people around you externally might be feeling or being aware of who else is in the room and how they might be feeling or hearing or seeing something and then from that taking of the temperature it's your ability to use this awareness to manage your own behavior again starting with you and your own relationships so what is the response the action that you're going to put out into place based on your own awareness and recognition of your own feelings and the feelings, the temperature in the room, and then being able to manage your own behavior and relationships and respond with a action that is in alignment with the temperature that you're trying to set. So it starts with personal competence. So we have to have personal competence, which means individually. So it starts with us individually as thermostats. And so our own emotional intelligence begins with, with me. It begins with you. It's, it's what I, my own personal competence believes with what I see, so my own self-awareness of what is it I'm feeling and what is it I see, and then my own, so from what I see, my own self-awareness and what I'm feeling, to what it is I do, my own kind of self-management or, or self-regulation or self, you know, the calibration of that thermostat. So it starts with us individually. What do I see? My own self-awareness about how I'm feeling and what I see is happening around me. And then what I choose to do. My own actions, my own behavior, my own response, my own self-management. So from our own personal competency of what I see and what I do, then it extends from an internal to external. My own social competence, which means I then am and outside of what I feel and what I see, now I'm looking out and saying, what do I see with other people? The social awareness of what are other people experiencing, what might they be feeling, and then what is that response? What is it I do from the seeing of other people, what I do? And so the development of that relationship, and whether that's somebody behind the coffee counter at the coffee shop that you don't have a, a, you know, a personal relationship with, but you read their emotion, their awareness, and then what is the response, the action that you do to develop a relationship? Which doesn't mean you know, you're having to or trying to become best friends with ever, anybody, but still the way you interact and your own emotional intelligence is, is all begins internally with you, what you see and and then what your behavior is, and then your social awareness of the people around you, and then ultimately what you do to build a relationship. Again, whether that's with the person in the coffee shop or whether that's somebody uh, on your team or throughout your company, a client or customer you're serving, or you know somebody you've been in relationship for years and years and years. My wife Amy and I, you know, we're about going to celebrate our 20th year of, of marriage coming up here soon, 25th year of being together, and yet still... 
the social and emotional intelligence of being with each other every single day requires us to not only read our own you know, e- e- emotions internally, our own personal competency of what we see and we feel and have awareness of our own self and then what manage the, the, the response or the action, the behavior that we put out individually, and then certainly our awareness of each other, what the other might be feeling or seeing, and then how to, what actions and behaviors and response do we put into action to develop that relationship further. And so this is happening moment by moment every single day. And again, they say that 58% of performance, of all performance, every moving throughout the world every single day is tied to emotional intelligence. It's our ability to be aware, our ability to listen to our own thoughts, our own bodies, our own thinking, feeling, and then the response, the action that we put into into practice in the world for our, to manage our own behavior and our own self, but also to reach out and develop the relationship with the people around us. So calibrating our personal thermostat for awareness and that response you know, uh, plus are calibrating our social awareness and the relationship development as a team. You know, it, it's a reminder that we are all thermostats every single day. We are thermostats and we we often are taking the temperature of ourselves and of the room. But then we are all either adding and setting the temperature, regulating the temperature, you know, contributing to the temperature in the room in a way that we want and our response is adding value and contributing to the temperature in the room or sometimes we get too hot or too cold and our response or lack of response is detracting from the temperature in the room and all of this our internal temperature sets a temperature externally for others based on our awareness uh, then our response and our behaviors And so if we know, again, that 9 out of 10 people say that they want a more meaningful work culture, what do we we think that tells us? Our emotional intelligence would tell us that we want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to be valued. And also we want to be in, uh, we want to be co-creators in something that's greater than us. We want to be in relationship with others. That doesn't mean we have to be or want to be best friends with everyone in the world, but we want to be a part of and co-creators with others and be in relationship with the development of something that's bigger than us. And so as always on this podcast, I want to uh, leave you with some questions. So again, on today's podcast, we're just defining what is emotional intelligence and and then connecting us back to why this is important for uh, regulating and and controlling and setting that temperature in the midst of a changing uh, world that, that so much around us is often swirling that's out of control, but yet we are still always within control of our own awareness, our own response, our own behaviors, and then the relationship that we choose to develop with the people around us. So today we're just defining and talking about it. And on the next episode, we're going to dive into some tips for practicing our own personal and social competency with with EQ. So that's on the next episode coming up to part two, some tips and practice of personal and social competencies with with emotional intelligence. But now I'll leave you with some few questions to ponder for this week. What are you aware of? What are you aware of with your own personal feelings and responses lately? Take a few minutes, step back, maybe jot down some notes, some things. If you're just self-aware for a few minutes, what have you, what have been some of your personal feelings, maybe right in this moment today, or maybe over the last week or so, what have you been feeling and what have your responses been and have your responses been in alignment with the temperature that you're trying to set? What temperature do you want to set? Aspirationally, what is the temperature that you want to set for yourself as a leader and also for the people around you. What is that temperature and how would you articulate that? And then what temperature is needed right now? What is the temperature that's needed? How would you articulate that that's needed right now with your team, with your, you know, friends, your family, your community, whatever that is for you? What is the temperature that's needed? And are you going to be aware of what that is and what the response is that's needed? I look forward to being back with you again next time. Remember, the best leaders, teams, and cultures on the planet 
stimulate progress every single day by recalibrating their thermostat together. Thank you for listening to today's podcast, and I hope the messages and questions stimulate positive change along your path. As always, if these messages resonate with you and add value to your life, I hope you'll help amplify them throughout the world. Please rate, comment, and share on whatever podcast or social media platform you're using. And share this podcast with the people in your life or work who should be part of these conversations. That way, this spirit does, in fact, spread. If these messages or developing leaders and culture would be helpful to your organization, or you have a question or comment about this podcast, please contact us at jasonvbarger.com. And remember, we all are ambassadors for the culture we want to create in our life and work. We have to own the vision we want to be a part of. The future of leadership is you, is me, is us. Be a thermostat.